Hey guys, welcome to my world. I'm Jim Davis. I draw the comic strip Garfield. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to show you what I do, show you around the studio, and talk a little bit about our holiday specials. Uh, this is my desk here, all my computers and everything. This used to be a drawing board, now it holds my uh, laptop computer. And uh, I actually draw the comic strip uh, digitally these days. This is just, it's a Cintiq, and I can draw big Garfields and color them in if I want. And this is just, it's great fun to play with and uh, a great toy. Of course, nothing replaces being able to draw naturally really well. So let me show you something. You notice so I still have lots of books around here. That's one of the things, if you want to be a cartoonist, I think as important as being able to draw well, you should read. Read everything. Uh, the more you read, the more material you have to work with, with your comic strip. So, uh, so pick up a book and start working on your material today. Uh, speaking of working, uh, here's some artwork from my grandchildren. Every Friday they get off the school bus and we spend an hour or so drawing together, painting, coloring, and talking about art and cartooning and things like that and we have a great time. And uh, for me, I guess it sounds a little strange, but I don't believe in something called art talent. I believe in experience, that the more you draw, the better you get. If you have thousands of drawings behind you, every drawing from then on is going to be really good. So uh, let me show you how I draw Garfield. I always start with the eyeballs, and I always hope he ends up on the page from here. He has these big expressive eyes and these little ears. Over time, his mouth is getting bigger and bigger. That's because he loves to eat, and it makes him a lot more expressive, too. He has big, full cheeks, like me. And uh, I always worked in a mirror for several years, copying my expressions for Garfield and for John. So as a result, we gradually started to look a lot alike. And of course, he's got this big tummy. I didn't really copy uh, real cats when I designed Garfield. I thought what I thought would be a funny cartoon cat would be truer to the character Garfield than uh, if I tried to draw a real one. Garfield, by the way, is uh, named after my grandfather. His name was James A. Garfield Davis. He was named after the president. And he was a big stubborn man and reminded me in many ways of Garfield. So I, I thought that would be a good name for him. Put some stripes on the back. Have him wave to you here. There we go. He's happy to see you. Put some ground indications in here. There we go. And the most important part, my signature. Here we go. And that's Garfield. Okay, enough of that. Let's go take a tour of the studio. We're here in Indiana. A fireplace is a really good thing to have in the wintertime. I keep that going all the time in the winter to keep us warm. We're in the middle of the country out here. This is uh, the main part of the studio. You'll see my uh, portrait up there, sort of a done with pointillist kind of style, it's kind of silly. I never, I never look up when I go out that way. <laughs> We're here on about 30 acres of woods and meadows and ponds. It's very nice. It makes it very relaxing to work. So when things get really crazy, uh, we just go take a walk in the woods, go scream at the squirrels. So. You can see out here, Indiana cornfields right across the street. This makes a very peaceful place to work. <laughs> and the only, thing, the only thing really where you could tell that this is Garfield Studio, that's out front, we don't have any signs or anything, but we do have this big paw print. So uh, aside from the fact this is a rather large building to be sitting in the middle of the country, this is the only thing that says it's really Garfield's home. So we have a lot of fun here. 
Let's go inside and uh, meet some of the people and I'll show you some of the things we do here for Garfield. This is the front door. This is where all the mail comes in. And all of Garfield's guests. Oh, oh, hey Kim. Hey Frida. Hi Sheila. This is Garfield. And this is the first strip uh, that I ever did. It's 36 years ago. So Garfield, uh, John, in case you didn't know it, actually is a cartoonist. I only alluded to this in the first comic strip. He goes, hi there, I'm John Arbuckle. I'm a cartoonist and this is my cat, Garfield. Look how different he was there. He had the little tiny eyes, big fat cat. Garfield says, hi there, I'm Garfield, I'm a cat. And this is my cartoonist, John. John says, our only thought is to entertain you. And Garfield says, feed me. Kind of set the tone for the next 36 years. So here's Garfield. Very popular picture opportunity. So Garfield's doing what he does best, sitting and relaxing. You'll see a lot more of that around the studio. So here he is again. This is one of our mottos here. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> we always try to have a good time because we're not having fun. We change things around here. Yeah, Garfield's actually sitting in my director's chair. It's got my name on it there from uh, doing the uh, first uh, Garfield movie. Uh, Garfield the movie. We'll go down this hall. We have uh, an educational foundation called ProfessorGarfield.org. And these are some of the awards and recognitions for the work we've done over the years. We provide uh, educational content free online at professorgarfield.org. And uh, as part of our contribution and support of encouraging literacy. And we have a lot of educational kind of modes too. We teach mathematics and all sorts of stuff. But uh, primarily it's about reading because we found that Putting a picture with a word, as in cartooning, really helps people learn to read better. So we're all about that. Now, let's go this way. Let's go to the computer department. We've got, uh, oh, we've got writers here. Look at all these comic books. You can tell the writers. There's an actual writer in there. Here's a writer. Be very quiet. Okay, don't surprise them. Right. This is our atrium. The Everything's built around all this atrium where we can gather, play cards, read, have lunch, and uh, everybody gets a window this way. Uh, Indiana winters are a little cold, a little dreary, and uh, we run the risk of getting uh, angry and nasty, so <laughs> we keep sunshine in the building and uh, to keep everything uh, light and funny because that's what we do for a living. And uh, so we have a good time here. Here's a little Garfield sculpture with a little fountain. And oh, it's one of my favorite little toys here. Here's Garfield in his a Garfield ride. This is really fun. Here we go. What's this? And oh, here we are. All right. And it plays music and it's really fun. And I have a really good time getting into it. And there we go. And, okay. Maybe I'm a little bit large for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, okay, I, um, I need some help. <laughs> okay, anybody? Is anyone here? Hello? Hello? <laughs> okay, this now, now it really isn't funny. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, do, do, let's go to the art department. This is where all the fun pictures and all the art's done. You can see these are some designs we're doing for some Garfield art down the road. One of our designers, Jeff Wesley, he has, oh, he actually heard me even with his his earbuds in. You can see he's a big collector too. You see the theme around here? Lots of toys <laughs> and funny stuff. So it helps to be a, a cartoon fan in this line of work. All kinds of products from the international market. Ideas. Oh, 
and cartoonists too. You're gonna be famous. This is Lori Barker. She's been working on Garfield forever. Look at this, look how big she works on this antique here, inking the Garfield strip. <laughs> it makes it easier. We all learned with brush and ink, and it took some time to learn how to work with a stylus. We used to use all these drawing boards. Now you can see that they're all uh, computers over here. It's Lars, works with coloring, works with, you can see he loves to do watercolor as well. And uh, what are you working on, Lars? I've got um, some files here that I'm, strips that I'm preparing okay. uh, to be colored. All right. So they were Illustrator. They're going into um, mm -hmm. Photoshop, and black and white TIFF file, and uh, here's one that's getting getting there. And then I will make a uh, color TIFF file, mm -hmm. uh, and then proceed to uh, color. All of the um, uh, comic strips go into color electronically as well, and uh, then once they're colored, signed, and dated then as opposed to putting them in a package and mailing them to the syndicate where you go, press a button these days, you go, it's magic. <laughs> Here's old color proofs of the Sunday strips and stuff we did and the separations and uh, getting ready in preparation for publishing in book form. And through here, we have uh, people doing design you can see all kinds of artwork on the walls and the posters like from the Garfield TV show right here. Over here, actually we do molding here and uh, our sculptor uh, Marvin Porter has worked with uh, all of these products and you can see we work with uh, little dolls and cast products and things like that. This actually, it's called a maquette and it was sculpted to uh, create the Garfield for the Garfield movie uh, from 20th Century Fox. You'll notice we had to choose, do we give him cat teeth or human teeth? And we had to determine how his hair laid back and then this was scanned with a laser and then input for the animation for the movie. And uh, a lot of product comes through this studio and uh, we have great fun with it because Garfield was drawn flat for the comic strip uh, is not quite the same Garfield that we have to mold in 3D for when product comes out because you've never seen Garfield in a comic strip in perfect profile because he doesn't have much of a nose. <laughs> and uh, here we do a lot of the copying and everything like that. We've got uh, also uh, people here who work directly with the manufacturers who make all the Garfield product and ah! Oh, <laughs> this is me. Uh, this is from the second Garfield movie, uh, Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties. It takes place in uh, England in an old castle. And uh, you could see this is uh, one of their counts or whatever, and uh, who had a cat that looked an awful lot like Garfield at one time. And the producer, as a joke, made the, uh, the aristocrat look strangely like somebody I know. And he gave me the painting after the, we got done uh, shooting the movie. And uh, here's where I spend some time every day, too. Uh, this is my signing table right here. I sign all the fan mail and everything every day, sometimes several times a day. And uh, it's fun to read, you know, the comments the fans have, you know, about what they like about the strip, what they don't like about the strip, or what they recommend to do with the strip. And, and kids, they like to draw... Uh, Garfield and send them in from classes and things like that. And it's just always fun to see. Uh, I never get tired of you know, seeing how people respond to Garfield. It's very exciting because I do it to entertain myself and to think other people laugh at it. Uh, it's a real rush. It's great fun. You can see too how the cartoonists uh, work on Garfield. We, we put Garfield, uh, they put Garfield in their strips and I put their characters in my strip. We have a lot of fun with that. Let's go upstairs. In fact, I'll show you some more art that we do and some more products. We have a lot of people visit the studio to work on uh, books and shows and products and things like that. So we've put 
uh, all of our favorite products and everything into a big conference room, a big showroom, so that we could have creative sessions and show people what we do. And uh, there's the big guy right there. And here's just a sampling of the Garfield product. You can see these are things we've done over the years from collectible plates to actual teapots to flower pots to, to telephones. And uh, it's been great fun. You have to learn a lot of different things when you work with the products about electronics and about publishing and about media and things like that. So these are products from um, all over the world. Garfield's in about, let's see, he's in 111 countries. He's published in 28 languages. And so we have uh, samples of his pet product. Here's an actual pachinko machine from Japan. And uh, this is international clothing, uh, leather jackets. Those were wonderful and all kinds of bedding, kid stuff, publishing, uh, Garfield in all these different languages. He works really well in other languages because basically all he does is eat and sleep. <laughs> you know, so everybody eats and sleeps and they like cats all around the world. So he's been uh, uh, very popular in uh, the international markets. And we have uh, Christmas ornaments, and all kinds of figurines. Look at the size of this plush over here. These are just huge. I've often said it kind of wears me out to look at all this product because with each and every product there's a story. <laughs> Design time, going back and forth, prototyping, you know, and kind of going to manufacture on each of these products. But it's been great fun over the years. We have client meetings over here and creative sessions. So we can run up uh, uh, images of Garfield and work uh, with the artists real time and design things. You can see uh, a big poster of uh, Garfield's Pet Force, one of the direct videos we produced ourselves here. Just fun stories, good times. And this is the conference room. Ta-da! 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 La! Thank you, thank you. Okay, this is of our favorite product from some of the promotions that we've done over the years. And uh, this is one of my favorite walls. This is uh, stuff we've done with other cartoonists. Uh, here's some of the stuff we even draw together sometimes when we get together. The cartoonists are like a bunch of kids. We'd just as soon be you know, having some laughs, playing golf, things like that, you know, as drawing the comic strips. But to us, that's not work. You know, I say it's nice work if you can get it, but to be honest, I can't believe I'm getting paid for it <laughs> because we, we have a lot of fun, a lot of laughs doing all of this. And um, here's an area where uh, we have some of our uh, TV and cartooning recognition as well. This is a Reuben. This is the Award for Outstanding Cartooning. And of course, these are Emmys uh, for uh, Best Writing for Primetime Specials, and uh, of which this is one, the Halloween Special. This was a great project for us because we wanted to really scare kids. And we did it with real classic ghosts and pirates and things like that. And I wrote the script and then we spent uh, day and night for several weeks up here, right here, storyboarding, doing the layout drawings and everything for the Halloween special. In fact, uh, even though this was animated in, Hollow at, in Hollywood, uh, there was a part of the special we animated here because we wanted to get a very specific effect. And that was a really scary scene where the pirate ghosts come out of the bay and start swirling around on the beach before going into the house. We did that with white pencils and uh, on dark backgrounds and then did it in slow motion to make them look uh, eerie and make them look like they were glowing. And uh, we had just lots of fun, lots of fun with the scary voices and all the big jokes, Garfield, of course, with the peg leg and everything like that. And then the Thanksgiving special is probably the most Garfield-like of all the specials because it's all about food. He's put on a diet early in the special, and then the rest of the story is about him trying to get food. And, of course, it's about family and relationships and everything like that. John dealing with his... Um, 
a bachelorhood trying to prepare a big dinner and everything before the family comes in. And we had great fun with that. And of course the iconic show for our holiday was the Christmas special. I wanted to do a special that, uh, a Christmas that was like my Christmas, growing up on the farm uh, with my family. I actually have a brother, Doc Boy, mom and dad, all on the farm. And uh, I wanted to do something to capture kind of the magic of Christmas for, um, that I could remember from my childhood and some of the kind of things we did on the night before Christmas and the day of Christmas, hoping that uh, it would uh, uh, help other people reminisce about their Christmases as well, wherever they live, in another country, or on the east and west coast. It, I just wanted to pack it with a lot of warmth and a lot of humor and things like that. In fact, uh, Pat Carroll played the part of the grandmother, great Shakespearean actress and uh, just a great, uh, great actress all around. And she did such a super job with that. Um, we really patted her part. Uh, as the grandmother because I wanted to give her some, some real warmth. M one of my philosophies of doing a show like this is make them laugh, make them cry, and uh, so that you run the gamut of emotions and it make, it's well worth your you know, time spent watching the show. And uh, she really helped with that. We actually reanimated part of this show. We worked on it so hard and ran right up the deadline. We felt parts of the show were just a little bit jerky. So after it aired on CBS about 30 years ago, we actually went back and reanimated about seven or eight minutes of the show to get it just right, just the way we wanted it. And uh, so I'm really pleased uh, with the Christmas special. So uh, any questions? No, oh, joke. There is going to be a test, however. But those are the holiday specials, and uh, they're a great time. Uh, just uh, great classic stories. And uh, so I was happy to be able to share those experiences with you, show you a little bit of the operation. So uh, thanks so much for being with me.